Welcome to our world channel. Its influence is equal to that of Einstein. Who is the prophet of information? Claude Shannon. In the arms of the loving spring, in the sight of its flowers, and on the leaves of one of the defining moments in the life of history, a little child was born Elwood Shannon, a Michigan businessman and former judge, on April 30, 1916. Claude Shannon is widely considered one of the most influential minds of the 20th century. After his contributions to the field of communication theory and digital technology are revolutionizing the way we communicate via the Internet. From his pioneering research in information theory to his work in cryptography, Shannon's work laid the scientific foundations for communication systems. Modern technology and the Internet as we know it today. Growing up has the greatest impact on a person. Little Claude grew up in a family that valued intellectual curiosity and encouraged his love of watering. A diet and science. He excelled in his studies and invested in it. Enrolling in the University of Michigan, where he obtained a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Epidemiology in 1936, and after completing his undergraduate studies. Shannon enrolled at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to continue his studies. His supreme foundations. During his time at the Institute, Shannon began his pioneering research in the field of communication theory, which culminated in the publication of his paper The Foundational, Mathematical Theory of Communication, in 1948, and is seen today as the basis of modern communication systems. Death unusual type of young man. They always say that great writers leave behind books, not biographies. His work is exhausted. Their lives to such an extent that there are few words left for them to write about themselves, even if our nation watching them scribble away for hours each day. We will find out more about them just by read the pages of their books. This fully applied to Claude Shannon during his first working years as he worked with an intensity and concentration that would not be matched by him. No one cares. Shannon's work was also different. Unlike his comrades who were absorbed in understanding and building physical tools, he had a passion for seeing beyond material things. Specifically the abstract concepts on which these things are built, so that he was seeking to see and understanding the work of juggling, such as cycling with one wheel and others of acrobatic activities using equations. In this sense, Shannon's brilliance resulted not so much from his quantitative arithmetic ability as from his ability to simplify big problems to their essential essence. He was an abstract man, who took a step back from the world, and his solitude was his guide in his work. Although his deep withdrawal and shyness may have hampered his social life, they also allowed him to have a unique view of the world. For him, physical human artifacts were just cheap substitutes for the real reality of numbers, theories, and pain. Pronounce. Before the age of Shannon, information theory, was lurking in the folds of science and hovering behind the scenes like a ghost, as in app. The physiologist Hermann von Helmholtz who recorded, through his experiments with frog muscles, prompted the speed of nervous signals a it was also present in the works of physicists Rudolf Clausius and Ludwig Boltzmann, on entropy, which opened open doors to understanding information transmission systems. More importantly, information theory is embodied in the networks that arose from the initial attempt at communication and information transfer. The letters come between any two points. Back then, when Claude Shannon was still a little boy, the worldwide communications networks evolved from the simple wires that ran tele-electricity to intricate machines that span continents. The sound signals traveled thousands of miles through the amplifiers that prevented the signals from fading. And the phone calls were the first as a constant torment because of the loud noise associated with the process of transmitting information. Communication is one of the most basic human needs. From passenger pigeons to the telephone to the television, humans have always sought ways to meet it allowed them to communicate more, faster, and more reliably. 
but the architecture of the communication systems was tied trust the source of the information and the medium through which it is transmitted. Instead, Shannon asked the unconventional question. Could there be a grand unified theory of communication? In a 1939 letter to his mentor Vannevar Bush, Shannon outlined some of his initial thoughts on exponential properties. Exponential for general systems for the transfer of intelligence. At that time, the word information was not used among researchers and scientists to refer to what we call information today. Rather, they used the word, intelligence, and this was the question he directed to his teacher, who once described him as, a kind of not normal from the youth. Was the beginning of Shannon research the, intelligence, that would later pave the way for all the modern digital technologies that exist today, including human intelligence. Artificial. The legal father of information theory. After working on this question for a decade, Shannon finally published his scientific masterpiece in 1948, Theoretical Mathematical Formula for Communication, laying the basis for all modern communication, beginning with the analog audio signal on the line landline phone, access to wireless internet on your smartphone. While Shannon's masterpiece is primarily a communication theory, it is at the same time a theory about how you come to be the concept of information and its transmission. So it is, information theory, and thus Shannon is now considered the father of information theory. To understand one of Shannon's important ideas, let us assume that you are talking in a very noisy place. What better way to it's time to make sure your message gets through? Perhaps repeat your words several times. This is certainly the first thought that can come to you. Of course, the more you repeat your words, the more reliable the connection, but you sacrifice speed for reliability. Shannon showed us that we could do a much better job, that instead of repeating the letter perhaps we should heal. It refers to special symbols that only the receiver can understand, and is not affected by the surrounding noise. Thus, speed can be combined with and reliability together. It does not matter much in this case the nature of the message or the type of information to be conveyed, whether it is a short story, or a sim and or intention, or a film. The most effective way of transmitting it is by converting it into coded parts. This insight paved the way for the digital age, where bits prevail as the global currency for information. Shannon did not stop at this point as his subsequent research contributed to the development of the concept of logical gates, which are of the same electronic circuit containing one input or several inputs, and an output one, where it performs a logical operation on the entrance and produces the required output, and is a logical gate concept, very vital in building processes for electronic devices and computers. In 1950, Shannon published an article in Scientific American describing how to program a computer to play chess. Shannon's chess program was a landmark. As he was able to analyze the different games and divide the program into B sub-programs, so he suggested improving the program by analyzing more games. During a period when there were only a few computers in the world, Claude Shannon's paper dared to imagine there are programs that do more than just numerical calculations. Shannon focused on chess programming as a test case for the hypothesis if computers could break IC really, if playing more games can increase the efficiency of the program. Later, this hypothesis was validated by Arthur Samuel, an engineer, IBM, who used the same method to improve the program for playing checkers. In 1959, Samuel published a paper on this process and coined the term machine learning for the first time. In just one paper, Shannon's contributions cover information theory, logic gates, and computer programming. His work paved the way for the modern computer age that we enjoy today. And while we may never see another brain like him again, Claude Shannon's legacy will live on. Shannon was and still is, an inspiration to many scientists and engineers who came after him. In addition, 
His works and ideas still form the basis for many applications and modern technologies in many fields, including communications, computer science, neuroscience, artificial intelligence, robotics, encryption, security, and others. A man who does not like the lights. Although he spent most of his working life in scientific research, Shannon was a man of many talents and interests. A mom's. He loved to play games, solve puzzles, and design new ones, and was skilled at playing musical instruments and writing poetry. He also had a keen interest in philosophy and spoke several languages fluently. Now, you might be wondering, if one man has so much influence over our present world, then why doesn't he have a month? Such as those possessed by Einstein or Edison. The answer is simply that he is a man who does not like the limelight. About two years after publishing his paper, Shannon was horrified by the popularity of his theory. Ma'am it is exaggerated. Everyone in the world today knows, without exception, that this was one of the rare times that Shannon was wrong. The man was apparently afraid that all this momentum would lead him to lose himself, so he decided to withdraw and stop giving lectures and not giving press interviews. The prophet of the information age declined fame and attention, and began avoiding responding to email, until the mother ended up with him. Please collect the unanswered messages in a folder named, Messages I Took Too Long to Reply To. As a mysterious star, Shannon chose to withdraw from public life. And in order to complete his saga of seclusion, he was chosen by Alzheimer's disease. The end of his life is a new victim, but he did not die on February 24, 2001. Before he put his mark on everything we counted. Normal, in the digital life that we live today. Thanks for watching, and see you in a new video.